I've come to realization that when one tends to lack identity itself, it's really an overall because that person lacks their identity in Christ. And when you lack the identity in Christ, you lack the ability of knowing the power in which you possess through Jesus, who by his name, in which we are most powerful, who by in his name, we have the most authority because he has already conquered, he has already defeated all things. And I've come to realization the reason why we lack the authority the reason why we lack, you know, the identity in which we find in ourselves through Christ is because of a lack of confidence and also because of a lack of trust in God. And which is crazy because we find the most strength and confidence when we trust and when we believe by faith in God and who he says he is, what he's capable of doing and what he has already done for us. And the reason why I feel like many of us have been battling this endless cycle of lack of trust and, you know, just lack of, you know, confidence in oneself. Because overall, we lack the confidence and the trust we have in God. And this can stem from rejection. This can stem from people putting word curses over you all your life. And you start to become that identity instead of the identity which God had told you who you were through him. You took upon a false counterfeit identity which was presented to you that wasn't the actual true reality of who God said you truly were. Mm. And I believe that God is getting many of us to come back down to that reality. A lot of us have lost touch with ourselves for so long. A lot of us have allowed the words, the insecurities, and the opinions of others to be dumped on us. It got to a point where it just kept cutting you from the inside and out, leaving open wounds for you to bleed on others, for you to even bleed on yourself allowing you to drown in your own blood, allowing you to drown in your own insecurities so that a door will be open for the enemy to come in and tell you that you weren't enough. So the enemy can be able to come in and tell you that you did not have the power in which God has already placed on the inside of you that's already been there. But God right now wants to unlock it. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because God had me in Matthew 12 yesterday. Shout out to my sister in Christ for really leading me to that chapter because it was definitely needed for me. And throughout this chapter, it just consisted of many of the religious Pharisees trying to come at Jesus sideways, trying to accuse Jesus of being demon possessed, trying to accuse him of being something that he wasn't, trying to ruin his credibility so that he will be down, so that he could be discouraged, and so that he will lose the identity of knowing who he was in God and what he possessed through the Spirit of God. Because the enemy can attack your identity, the enemy can for sure attack your power. You read through that chapter that's all he was trying to do to jesus pharisees were so religious and they idolized their man-made traditions and their man-made rituals so much that they literally missed the messiah right in front of them because they were so blinded by religious customs but by their hypocrisies and by their accusations they literally proved to jesus and to many that they truly didn't live the things that in which they preached or tried to accuse others of not believing or not living by. I want to read y'all this verse um, in Matthew chapter 12 because what they tried to accuse Jesus of, it really stood out to me and it definitely, you know, sums up this whole overall message that I'm trying to get to you today. First thing we should realize is that what led up to this accusation was because Jesus went over to heal a demon-possessed man. And a demon-possessed man, he was blind and he was mute. Jesus healed everything about this man in which that he was, you know, going through. This led the Pharisees to accuse the power in which Jesus used to cast the demon out of man be the power of a demonic spirit. So basically we're saying that Jesus was not using the spirit of God to cast out demons out of this man, but that he was using demons to cast out demons. Basically saying that Jesus himself was demon possessed, casting out another demon possessed man. That right there is when they spoke blasphemy about the Holy Spirit because they accused the Holy Spirit, which is not profane, which is incorruptible, to be of a spirit that was corruptible, to be of a spirit that is of sin and evil. Now, I wanna read y'all the rest, verses 25 through 30. And it says, but Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Bezalbub, by whom do your son cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Jesus recognized what was at play here. 
Jesus recognized that these men were no good. Jesus recognized that their only motive was being used by the devil to cause division, to cause destruction and desolation in the same place where Jesus was trying to cause unity, where Jesus was trying to bring true change and true healing through others. This is where Jesus beat them at their own game. It wasn't the fact that they accused him of being demon possessed, but what truly didn't make sense to him and what disappointed him even more is that they didn't even understand their enemy. They didn't even understand their opponent. Jesus like, although the devil is the enemy, I know that he is smarter than to cast down his own kingdom. If anything, the devil wants to build up his kingdom so he can crash down God's kingdom. If anything, the devil wants more souls unsaved than saved. And the devil will raise up anybody. He'll raise up as many people as he can to try to deceive the people of God. So why would he? Why would the devil himself destroy his own kingdom? Why would the devil simply cast out the devil? While they were so busy trying to catch Jesus up in the wrong, they didn't realize that they were being used by the enemy to deceive them own selves into their own demise by using what they believed was wisdom, by using what they believed was knowledge as being the ones that they thought to themselves were credible. Sometimes we don't realize this, but just like Jesus, sometimes we have to call things out that are put in the forefront, that are presented as selves in something that it really ain't. Y'all, this is why I feel like it is so important right now that God's saying we need to learn how to exercise our authority. Just imagine if Jesus would allow the vain opinions. Just imagine if Jesus would allow the slander. And he would allow those people to diminish his character. He would allow those people to diminish who God had called him to be. Then he wouldn't have been able to walk into the fullness of who God had made him to be. He wouldn't have been able to exercise the power which was given to him by the spirit of God that lived within him. I feel like this is something that I needed. I feel like this is something that many of us go through on a daily basis or many of us have been struggling with all our lives. And I was talking to a, a sister in Christ about this. And what God was showing me, what I began to recognize was that all my life, I've always allowed people to tell me who I could be and who I could not be. What I should do, what I should not do. Who I should be with, who I should not be with. I allowed people's opinions. I allowed people's own traumas and own deflections to fall upon me. And it literally caused me to self-sabotage. Allow me to fall in the pit of despair. Allow me to fall in the entrapments and the snares of the enemy so that he would be able to keep me bound and I could continue to keep going in this cycle of not knowing my worth, of not knowing who God had called me to be, not knowing who God had made me be in the power and authority which he holds within me. Through him, when you come to a place where you've been rejected, where you've been abandoned all your life, you will allow people's opinions, you will allow people's deflections to toss you to and fro because you don't even know who you are yourself to be able to stand your own ground. We allow the enemy to bully us. We allow the enemy to tell us what we can and cannot do. We allow the enemy to scare us into who God has called us to be. And not only just who God has called us to be, but who God has already told us who we were even since the beginning. God is like, did I not give you the ability to trample up snakes and scorpions? Does not everything created on this earth, living and breathing, have to bow down to my name, have to bow down to my rule? Am I not the king of kings, the lord of lords? Have I not already told you in the secret place who you were? So why do you keep allowing those who don't even know what I even told you or don't even know our relationship determine and tell you which way you should go, tell you what you should be doing? Because just imagine if Jesus allowed for them to tell him what he should do. And he wouldn't be able to be the man that we know him as today. Stop allowing people to limit you. Stop allowing people to put you in a box. God himself even said that you can't even fit in. My authority, my strength, my power is already in you. And what you need to do is put your foot down, speak what I give to you. Speak what's already on the inside of you. Unlock it and put Satan back in his place. Because once you put Satan back in his place and put your foot on his throat, then he has no choice but to back down. He has no choice but to flee. God is like, I'm with you. And no matter what, brother, sister in Christ, real brother, real sister, spouse, even close friend, we have to watch the words we come into agreement with. Because not all opinions or not all the advice is bad advice. Some people actually mean well, but it's the spirit behind them. It's the spirit that's using them is the same spirit that is being used to cause you to be defeated, cause you to be distracted, cause you to have fear, be doubtful, and be anxious. When God tells you to be anxious for nothing, the goal is to build up the kingdom, not tear it down. The goal is to uplift others and encourage others, not you know try to place our own thoughts and opinions all in the name of prophecy or quote unquote wanting the best for that person. Know who you are, man, and know that saying already defeated. Just know that Jesus already conquered that on the cross. All God wants you to do is walk in your new profound freedom and walk in your victory, which is already inside of you. Walk in that authority. I love you. And so does God. God bless.